Welcome to Faith Rising, a podcast about living with bold faith in the modern age. On this episode, Daniel and Amber discuss truth, lies, and discernment. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining us on today's episode of Faith Rising. Today, we wanted to take a few minutes to speak to you about something that uh, the Lord's really had on Amber and I's heart, which is our ability to discern the difference between truth and a lie. And I feel like this is really key for us right now uh, in this time, yeah. because we're so inundated with different information and uh, mistruths from different directions and things that people would like us to believe that maybe don't line up with the Word of God. And uh, we even teach our children the same thing in yeah. our daily lives. Uh, we have to really look for the truth. We have to seek out the the truth and be able to see behind the veil of what the enemy would lie to us over. You know, and we always remember this, Jesus is the truth. He is the truth. He's called the truth and the word. And, um, you know, we have, we're being flooded with all information and we're challenged in a way that we weren't challenged with 15 years ago because, you know, used to, we just had a few, um, news channels and um now we've got social media and you've got just millions and youtube and you've got millions of and these things can be good things but they can also be very confusing things and there's so much information out there and um you know, I was just thinking about this thing that happened in the government. Would you just tell us about that a little bit? Yeah, there's always a war over whose voice is going to be heard and whose voice is going to mm. rule and reign. And uh, we're seeing that in today's culture and even in things that are going on in the media. And uh, just most recently, uh, we found out that our Department of Homeland Security here in the United States has uh, set up a division that's for uh, truth to determine what truth is in social media and begin to monitor some of the things that are being said and uh, censoring those things that, that are aren't truth. But um, as we think about that, we really have to be aware of uh, who's truth. Because, you know, we can all accept the truth. We can accept a version of the truth. But whether it's God's truth is always the question. Yeah. I always say this. I always say, um, you know, believing one lie, just one, is dangerous because that, that lie, it could be a lie, a lie about yourself. The enemy, he's the father of lies. And so that one lie could be a lie about yourself that just totally throws you off track and um, keeps you from really even know you can get confused about who you are if you believe a lie. Um, but then also there's just so much going on in the world and we have to be able to discern uh, what's really the truth. And this really is about discernment. You know, I see a lot of and, and I'm, I'm basing this on my social media and news feed, like I will see spirit-filled Christians who will get really excited about something that happened and they don't know anything about it. And uh, you know, that this recently happened with a social media company that just got bought and everyone just got really, really excited about it. And I thought, you know, hold on, you don't know, you don't know these people. Slow down, let's slow down and let's just wait and see what the truth is. And there's so much censorship that's um, gone on now with social media and in the media world where uh, someone else wants to define for us what we believe rather than just allowing us to hear it and discern for ourselves what it is that we're listening to or see going on in front of us. And I feel like it's just really important for us to develop our uh, our sense of um, discernment to the point where we allow the Spirit of God to speak into us and to show us the difference between the truth and the lies. I'm going to tell you guys just a story um, you know, it's a simple story, but it was something that really, really affected me in my life. Um, when I was eight years old, I found out that there was no Santa Claus. And I really, truly believed with all my heart that there was a Santa Claus and a Tooth Fairy and an Easter Bunny and everything. And when I found out that, there, that my parents had been lying to me about Santa Claus. I was so devastated that I thought I couldn't trust them. And I was so devastated that I believed when I found out if there's no Santa Claus, then there must be no God. And so that's why, like, that seems like a little fun lie, you know, when we tell our kids that, you know, there's a Santa Claus that's going to come tonight, and it just seems like we're helping develop their imagination or something, but what we're really doing is lying. And maybe most kids don't take it as hard as I took it when I found out that it wasn't the truth my parents had been lying to me, but that, like, you know, so as a parent, you might think that is, a, that is an innocent lie, that, you know, we're just trying to make sure they're having fun, but this, this is one example of how a lie that may seem small can actually affect someone's um, perception about faith and eternity. 
Yeah, it's interesting to watch how just one mistruth or one lie uh, being introduced into your life, especially if it's at just the right time. You see, mm-hmm. Satan knows when to introduce a mistruth mm-hmm. or a lie into your life, and uh, just as much as the Lord knows our timing and the track that he has us on, and uh, sometimes when just that little seed is planted, it becomes uh, something that causes us to question everything we are, that causes us to question our identity. Uh, we just got, uh, got done filming a show in here this morning mm-hmm. that had to do with identity and uh, some of the identity crisis that are facing people today and uh, it seems to us that a lot of those things have gotten more complicated and that we've overcomplicated things that uh, that could be simple but something just as simple as believing that there's Santa Claus caused Amber to go back and question whether there was a God and uh, if we hit those points in our lives where uh, those those mistruths are introduced to us even though it seems like something innocent it can cause us to just go back and have to go over everything again yeah. to catch up to the point that the Lord had for us I thought it was interesting how, how you just now said that um, um, we're being uh, faced with these things and not that we're, we're facing these issues because we really are like there is such an agenda out there to get us to believe certain things to change our minds to change our kids minds to get us to believe it so we're like we're being faced with all these issues and so the question is is as as a body of believers, how do we deal with this issue of being bombarded with so much information and so much un- just untruthful, so many lies? You know, sometimes the Lord just calls me to take a break. I watch, I go and I look at the news every day. I pay attention to what's going on in the media and uh, different things. And a lot of the time the Lord will speak to me through that. But there are also times that I just have to take a step back from that and uh, let the Lord begin to speak to me because we have to create that space in our lives for the Lord to speak the truth into us. And uh, there are verses here that talk about that, that talk about uh, the spirit of the Lord being alive in your life and that allowing you to perceive his voice and his truth. One of the things that we have to remember, and we've said this, I think, three times on this show, is that there have to be absolutes in your life. And those absolutes, to live in the truth, they have to be what the Word of God says. So there must be absolutes. And there are some things that are black and white. And I know sometimes we like to say, you know, that not everything is black and white, but some things really are. And what is, is what's in the Word that's what's black and white and that it that that has to be your foundation to be able to live and walk in the truth and know the truth when you hear it um you know i think back about about i think about when we lived in israel and um we don't think about it as much anymore because we're not in israel but when we were in israel we would get really frustrated whenever there would be like a barrage of rockets, but then we would see it was nowhere on the news. <laughs> and that's, I mean, it's a really big deal. That should be on the news. And so that's something that people who live in Israel say often. And, you know, we remember there was strange propaganda that would just come out of, um, it would be coming from Gaza to change the narrative, to change the truth of what had actually happened. And really, Israel was being attacked and um but but you would look at foreign news information and you would look at social media and it made israel look like the big bad bully you know trying to just harm all these people in this small place in gaza when the truth is is you know gaza is oppressed by a terrorist organization called hamas now that is a that is a truth so you know it's interesting if you it probably would help a lot of people to be able to discern when you go back to God's first, well, since we're dealing with nations and we're dealing with um, information is to go back to God's firstborn nation and just pick up what are the truths there? What does God say about that nation? Because that's the nation we, we start with. You know, when we want to look at the truth and what's going on in the world, there's so much going on in the world right now. I mean, we have the thing going on with the war between U- Ukraine and Russia. We have all these conflicts in our country right now. I mean, our administration doesn't make sense. Like every time I hear them, they don't make any sense. I mean, I'm not trying to disrespect or anything, but they just don't make sense. And I'm sure most of you agree with me. And I, I think even people who voted for these people are realizing they're not making much sense right now. So, you know, they want us to believe certain things and we need to be really walking in the spirit 
of truth so that we don't get um, hoodwinked. Yeah, and one of the things that I think Amber is communicating here is uh, the messaging that's coming out uh, from the administration and that we see in the news all the time uh, contradicts itself many times. Mm -hmm. And one thing will be said one day, and then the next week they say the exact opposite. And it becomes a confusing situation well, for, in circles. for anybody who's watching it. Um, but I heard the Lord speak to me here um, this last week, and he said, learn to see behind the screen. And I think that that's really a word for us right now. And, you know, in past generations, they said, see behind behind the veil as if you're seeing something that's mm -hmm. hidden in a room and there were other ways of saying that but today I feel like it's see behind the screen there are so many things that are being communicated to us on a day-to-day -day basis through our cell phone or our iPad or through a TV screen and uh, we have to learn to discern what we're being told and uh, the information that we're taking in so um, I, I really had an experience with this all the way back to my days in law enforcement because uh, I would get a call and go and uh, deal with the situation as a police officer and be there when it happened. I would see exactly what happened. I'd go back to the evidence room. I'd talk to the other officers and get their perception and uh, see all everything that went into the investigation. And then I'd open the news the next day and the news would say a completely different story than what actually happened. And there was always some kind of a political slant to it to uh, either portray the, the police department in a certain light or portray the people that were involved in the, the call in a certain light. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to mature in your wisdom and your ability to discern uh, because there are people out there that will feed you their agenda if you're, if you're not discerning. Yeah, even just talking about Israel and talking about some of the things that have gone on there um, as we talk about this, you know, the issue between truth and, and lies. Um, Daniel and I went through something that was, it was really um, horrid. We had had a, a loss that we, we suffered. Somebody, somebody died. Um, in our ministry, and then about a week later, we we were actually in Taiwan when this happened. We were supposed to minister in Taiwan with your dad, and um, we opened up. I opened up my Facebook, just scrolling through it before I went to bed, which is a bad idea <laughs> before you go to bed. <laughs> but I did, and there, and I saw all these lies about us, like creative lies, things that. Not little lies like we talked about, like Santa Claus, but big, big, major fabricated stories that were very detailed. And I mean, that was devastating. It took, you know, of course, God gave us grace and strength, but it wore us out. And this went, this actually went on for a whole year where there would be um, lies, like big stories all over social media about us in Hebrew. And, um, it was. It affected us so much that sometimes before I'd go to bed, um, we were. I remember even being in Kenya, and we went to Kenya the November before the sh the COVID shutdown. That's right. And I remember having nightmares that I was waking up to more lies about us on social media. And I was in a. There was. I was in a season of months where I would have a nightmare every single night that we were waking up to more lies about us on social media. And so, you know, the Lord, even though we went through that, the Lord has really worked that out to where we have, I think we have a stronger faith in, in God. But I think it also brought, brought me and you closer together because we really had to, we had to lean into what, I mean, I remember your dad flew to Israel when it happened and he said, what is the truth about you? And I said, I really don't know anymore because there's so much on the internet about me that I really don't know what the truth is right now because we were just, that's how down we had gotten. But it helped you and I going through that. We got, I think we got closer to God. I know that for sure. Um, we realized how important it is to know the truth, to know the truth about yourself, about each other. That's right. And it taught us that there are injustices that are going to happen. Jesus went through all of that too. I mean, Jesus was, he was lied about, he was mocked. He was, he went through way more than we did. We did. I mean, you know, he went through the cross so that we would have eternity with him. And so he had to go through all of these things. So anytime you go through something like that, you always know, well, he went through more, you know, so he understands, like he understands your pain, your hurt, what, the injustice of it. Um, and so when I look back on that and how hard that was on our family, I do believe it developed greater faith in us.
Yeah, it sure did. And I remember how challenging that time was. And it really was having somebody bring an accusation against you that was, uh, you know, that hurtful and then having others that you know who are in your life uh, choose to believe that and uh, and walk through that was very challenging and it was a very mm -hmm. hard time for us. Um, but the Lord did bring it, us through it. And I, I've known many other ministers who have gone through situations like that mm -hmm. where something untrue was brought against them. And uh, unfortunately, many people you know, chose to believe it. But uh, it makes people stronger. You know? And yeah. I think if you're truly going to walk this walk and, uh, and be in ministry and try to help others, that you have to understand uh, what that looks like. So the Lord really did use that in our lives. Yeah. I want to tell another story about being lied about. Okay. This one's, I, we didn't plan this I one. I bet I could recite it myself. Oh, Go ahead. this is a good one. Okay. So um, when I moved from Round Rock, Texas, I was a cheerleader in Round Rock on the A team, and that was a big deal, and I loved it. It was my life. And then when I moved to Weatherford, Texas, <laughs> This is such a story. I moved to Weatherford, Texas, and the, uh, the, the cheerleaders kind of had their places, and they knew who was going to be. And they heard there's this new girl coming from a bigger school, and what if she tries out for a cheerleader? Well, I wasn't going to try out for a cheerleader because it was all based on popular vote, and nobody knew who I was, and I'd already decided I wasn't going to. I was really broken about it. So this rumor comes about. That someone made up a rumor about two girls kissing in the locker, in the locker room. And I thought, well, who on earth would do that? <laughs> so, like, I go through all of high school, and by the time I'm, like, 22 years old, this, this guy, a friend of mine, I said, did we ever figure out who those two girls in the locker room were? And he said, Amber, that rumor was about you. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a bad day when you realize that the rumor's about you? <laughs> well, I was, I was old enough, and it was, like, long enough, and people knew me well enough by then. They, they knew it wasn't true. Anybody who knew me knew that wasn't true. But I went through all these years. It's probably God's protection, protection like, because, you know, you're vulnerable when you're 14. If I found out that that was about me, I would have been really upset. But by the time I'm 22, it's, like, kind of funny that I walked through all these years not knowing that this one rumor was all about me. <laughs> It's a good old-fashioned smear campaign, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Could be on a reality TV show. <laughs> All right. Um, so in those two stories that Amber just shared with us, I think that the important thing to take away from that is to see how if you're not grounded in yourself and you're not standing on the Word of God and know who you are, that even such a small mistruth can cause you to begin to question yourself mm -hmm. in ways that the Lord never intended us to. He has our truth. Our truth is solid in Him, and we can stand on that. So as I was seeking the Lord this week over truth, there were several scriptures that he brought to mind and showed me that I want to share with you so that we can really go over this and get in our spirit uh, what the Lord wants to teach us about truth. Uh, the Lord taught his disciples, first and foremost, that the truth would set them free. Mm -hmm. And if you go to John 8, 31 and 32, it says, If you hold to my teachings, you're really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So in order to follow the Lord, we have to always be looking for his truth. We always have to take hold of his truth and internalize that and let it become part of us to the point where it guides our steps. And that's really what allows us to see uh, behind the schemes of the enemy and things that the, the enemy would do. Uh, to mix up our truth. Well, the one thing I want to say to that, too, is you notice that if you spend more time in the Word, it, it'll highlight things that are going on in the world. And just a little bit more time in the, wor in the Word of God, in the Bible, will actually, it because what we're talking about is discernment, right? That is a gift from the Holy Spirit. Um, but a way we develop it is by reading the Word. So something I've noticed, if I spend more time in the Word, then, uh, then everything else makes more sense than it would if I hadn't have spent time in the Word. The truth really acts for us to bring everything in our knowledge and our understanding into an alignment. And it all begins to make sense. When we hear the truth and we like, let that take hold mm -hmm. inside of us, everything else becomes... Everything lines up. If you go down later on in this passage in John chapter 8 to verse 44, Jesus is actually confronted by the Pharisees and other people that are questioning his teachings. And this is what he said to them. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. That is definitely exactly who the devil is. And as we're um, navigating through a world that really, really 
I mean, there are so many people who would say now that they don't even believe in God. And so as we're nav- navigating through this, this world as Christians, we have to remember that verse. That verse is very, very important to walk in the spirit and to maintain your walk with God, staying focused and knowing the truth so, you don't, so that you don't fall into a trap. Jesus goes on to say that those who belong to God hear his voice. In 847, it says, He who belongs to God hears what God is saying. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. So if we belong to God, there's a channel that opens up to us in the Spirit. We're able to hear the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back to just saying discernment, talking about discernment. You know, we need to, we discern by the Word of God and by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And so if discernment is something that you're struggling with, you, you may not really, you don't feel like you're, that, that gift is operating in you. I mean, that's something that you can ask the Holy Spirit for, is to increase your level of discernment. Some people are born with discernment. I mean, I believe that I was born with a gift of discernment, and it's not an easy thing to, sometimes you're seeing things that you don't want to see, and uh, Daniel has a gift of discernment also, so, but it's in the days that we're living in, these are days of confusion, it's very important that you ask God, if you don't feel like you're walking in discernment, that it's just that, that gift is activated in you to ask the Holy Spirit to activate, increase the level of discernment that you're operating in, that you're walking in. Amen. If you go back to John 1, 7, it says that for many deceivers have gone out into the world and those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh, this is the deceiver and the antichrist. So it's important for us to see how that antichrist spirit operates in the earth and operates through confusion and operates through lies and operates through deception. Mm -hmm. If you look at 1 Corinthians 2.14, it says a person without the Spirit of God can't discern the things of God because they're discerned by the Spirit. So we really have to internalize that and understand what that means because when we're baptized, we're baptized for repentance, but the Lord comes to baptize us with His Holy Spirit, and we need the Holy Spirit in order to be able to see the truth. One thing that I, the Lord's always really impressed on me is that if you look closely at what the Word says, Jesus' name is actually interchangeable with the Word. It refers to Jesus as the word mm-hmm. several times in the Bible. And uh, when we begin to think of the word and the truth and Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life as being one, it opens up our understanding of what the truth really is. And we begin to grab a hold of the concepts that the Lord has for us in truth and how that is what works in our lives to set us free. And uh, it ends up dividing the darkness from the light. Yeah. And I just saw this, like, if you ever can't distinguish between what the truth is, you can say, is this Jesus or not? Is Jesus in this or not? That would be one way to be able to know how you can tell the difference between a lie and the truth. That's it. So I just wanted to end by reading Hebrews 4.12. To me, this is just one of the most powerful verses there is when it comes to understanding the word of God and the truth that he has for us. It says, For the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. So when the word of God is truly alive and active in our lives, it begins to separate for us our soul from the spirit. And that's what we're really talking about today on the show is getting to that point where the truth that is the Lord becomes active in our lives and allows us to be able to discern the difference in the truth and a lie. So as we are walking through the end, the end times, we're living in the end times and we're, we're in an accelerated portion of that. I mean, we are seeing so many strange things going on in the world right now. We're seeing the weather patterns change like crazy. Things are happening all over the world where things hadn't happened before. We're seeing on the news food shortages. Um, you know, something that really bothered me that I saw even before we started filming today was that people are having a hard time getting formula for their babies. And so we're living in really hard times. Um, there's so, as we said before, there's so much deception. Um, and so this is why we did this show today is to help you just bring you back to the foundation of what is the truth, that is the word, and how to navigate through the world as the days days are getting darker. 
and even though the days are getting darker, we can still be the light and we still can walk through these times with faith. And so that's the reason that we have done the show on the difference between tr- truth and lies and how will you grow in discernment during these last days that we're living in. Amen. So we want to invite you just to pray with us now and uh, really begin to intercede that the Lord will speak into this issue with us and uh, begin to increase our discernment as a body and individually Mm -hmm. and uh, allow us to walk in his truth. So please join us. Mm -hmm. Lord, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for all of the revelations that you brought us to. And uh, we just thank you for your discernment, Lord, that you're the one who becomes our truth and operates in our life and just allows us to move forward uh, in wisdom and being able to see your face in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We want to thank you for joining us for this show. We want you to share it. We think that it'll help people. We think it'll minister to people. We want as many people as possible to learn to walk in the truth. And so like and subscribe and share and help us get the word out.